she didn't mean to be sad. She just was. Widowed young, outward the kudzu cover, covered over what might have been. She was backed in by tobacco bars and soybeans and forgotten rows full of corn with spiders and field mice. She longed for the times when the fields burned, the great blazes of freedom, scorching the ground and making it new. A farm wife in the vast Hampton County Piedmont, she had known the time of day by the coming and going of the deer in the peanut fields. She measured the seasons by seed bud and harvest and passed the years with pin scratches on the wall, marking the three of us girls taller and older. While she worked, we filled our afternoons rattling the pecan trees and collecting up enough to make a good sale. We'd catch a ride into Clinton and waste our earnings on Hollywood and buttered popcorn. But that to the back when things were easy. Once in the broken moonlight, we watched her slip out into the yard. She kneeled in the spot where she found him and put her hands over her face. From the window, we watched her shoulders heave, unbearable sobs that shook the whole world. There had been a man or three come around to see if he could fill our daddy's shoes, but she hadn't given any of them a chance. In the kitchen, she cooked, wearing a yellow apron and humming some tune from so far back that it made us sad. It must have made her sad, too, because she paused by the sink and put a hand out to steady herself, even though she was not about to fall. Some nights, we'd catch her huddled in the corner of their closet where she breathed in blue overalls that he once wore, white shirts worn thin, straw hat with a hole in the back of the brim. We planted ourselves like tiger lilies outside her bedroom door when she cried, tried to spread out and make her happy. We were three little girls like stair steps, high enough to raise her up, but too small to take her anywhere. We hadn't known him as much as we wanted to, his face always hidden beneath that hat as he climbed the steps to the back porch, with the sun nearly set to darkness behind him. He was a kind smile at the dinner table, big rough hands, nails caked with dirt. Later, we lay waiting in bed for him to poke his head in and kiss our foreheads goodnight. We touched the place where his rough lips had pressed and called him, Daddy, we love you. When we rambled down the stairs of the morning, he'd be out past the cows already, or atop his old tractor, weaving in and out of fields, making do for us. An older man, when he married, he worked hard despite his health. Long days in the field and hot hours in the barn begged he slow down, but he had mouths to feed and a wife to keep. In the worst of the winters, when there was nothing to do but hope, he would sit in his old chair in the living room and tell us stories of times gone by. In the passing of those gray days, we saw what she saw, his humor and his heart, and his need for our arms around him as much as we needed it in return. We wished for winter to linger longer, but the sky always turned blue again, and we were left without him. For a time, she hired day workers to tend the fields, but there was not enough harvest to pay them. So the four of us worked what we could, weeded and watered, and picked and aimed to keep it going. Once, she tried to drive the tractor as it was to, but she couldn't keep her hands on the steering wheel without breaking into those sobs that made us fearful we would lose her too. We managed for a time with what could be tended by hand, but when our schoolwork suffered, she let it all go. We made use of what grew despite neglect and little spirit for the care of such things. Evenings, she'd sit out in the damp, rain like baby fine mist, and shell beans. She'd hum that old tune and look out toward the dying tobacco fields in the way off. Her hands moved like water over the beans, a rhythm that stilled us and made us lonely. At dinner, she'd put daisies in a blue mason jar atop the orange light from my table and tune the radio to music older than she. We'd eat golden cornbread, sliver of pork, and those beans that tasted like heartache so old you couldn't live without it. With him gone, she made jelly, canned tomatoes, kept busy. She cooked ears of corn and tossed them out the window. She sold the things we could do without, the big clock in the hallway, cover over the windows, and after a while, the radio and the kitchen table. When our need began to show, the ladies' group from the Baptist Church had come by with all manner of casserole and cake. But once they figured us taken care of, they moved on to more pressing issues. We did our best not to need him. Mama tried to stay in the house without him. Tried not to reach out for him in her sleep. But when there was no more she could do, she scorched the ground. She moved us to Raleigh 
when we went to school with kids who didn't know the potatoes grew underneath the dirt. She married a man who worked at the bank. He loved her. We wore nice clothes on Sundays and piled up for church wearing shiny black shoes with white socks with lace trim. She'd make fried chicken for lunch with sweet tea with mint leaves floating on the ice. In the evening, when she'd wash dishes, she'd hum that sad song from so far before, her hands gripping the counter still to steady herself. We tried to be happy. Each night she read a story and kissed our foreheads, and we said, Mommy, we love you. And she said, You three are the heavens and the seas. Years later, the bank man died. His heart gave out of his mahogany desk. She told us when we came home from school. We're fine, she said, the four of us. Although we didn't need the money this time, she took the nice suits to a store in town where you could buy and sell old things. While she waited for the shopkeeper to determine the worth of the fabric and stitches, we rummaged around through the musty contents of the store, admiring all the things that someone had once cared for but could now do without. Let's go, girls. We've no more use here. The three of us trailed behind her, taller this time, though still not able to give her wings. She didn't miss, mean to miss the other one. She just did. Night, she sat out on the front porch of the bank man's house, where beans grew wild in the front yard, looking out at the wherever the other one might be. Her sadness was magic, and we never got her back. We went off to university, each to our liking, paid for it all with hard-earned scholarships, one after years of her telling us how a lady can do what she sees fit in this world if she wants enough. One of us a musician, one an architect, and one a mother just like her, with dreams and a farm to tend. We gather when we can and talk about the times gone away, what might have been, and the wonder of what turned out to be. In our dreams, we go back to our burned farmhouse, all black inside. We hear her humming, louder but farther away. We look for her, but she isn't there. So we sit cross-legged in the empty hallway and wait, moving our hands through the smoke like shelling beans, remembering the three of us, little and dumbfounded, somewhere between what was and what would be, ushered into the grass and grit without a chance to salvage anything.